Hi. Welcome to episode 9 of the Sweet Sparrow Knits podcast. My name is Julie. You can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, and Periscope as Julie Rose Sews. And you can find my hand dyed yarn in my Etsy shop at sweetsparrowyarns.etsy.com. So, welcome. Um, I am recording a little bit late this week. I had a busy weekend with family events. Um, and then on Sunday, I just needed to just relax and unwind. So it is Tuesday evening and I am recording. Um, so a couple quick things before we hop into the knitting content. Um, the 500 subscriber giveaway is still open in my Ravelry group. Thank you guys so much for all of your responses. Um, it's been absolutely wonderful reading them. It's really difficult not to respond. I know I can't because it's a contest thread, so I can't um, I can't add chatter because I would mess up the numbering, but oh, I want to. It's so tempting. So I am in front of a new background this week. This is my new bookshelf. Ah, I love it. And I will tell you guys more about that later on in the episode, but um, okay, anyway. 500 subscriber giveaway. Um, so I'm really enjoying reading your responses and hearing about what podcasts and television shows and movies and audiobooks, um, how you like to keep your brain occupied while you're knitting. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for all the wonderful responses there. Um, I have not had a chance to respond to all of the comments from last episode on Ravelry um, and I'm sorry for that so hopefully I will have time in the next few days and I will get back to everyone. The 500 subscriber giveaway will be open until Sunday, July 21st um, and then I'll close the thread. If the thread is still open, go for it. It means I haven't gotten to it yet. so. Um, feel free to enter for as long as the thread is open. Um, and then I'm hoping to podcast again on Tuesday, August 2nd, and that's when I will announce the winner. How exciting! Um, also, thank you so much for all of the support that I received in my last shop update. Um, I can't tell you guys how much it means to know that the things that I am making and the yarn that I'm dyeing um, means something to someone other than me. <laughs> um, it's really exciting to know that people are enjoying colorways inspired by their favorite characters or maybe it's just a color that really speaks to them and um, I do feel very connected to all of the colorways in my shop and it means a lot to me that some of you guys do too. Um, there are a couple skeins left. If that's something that you're interested in, please feel free to go take a look. Um, and thank you guys so much for all of your support. Works in progress. I only have two works in progress this week. I have not touched my calligraphy cardigan at all because it's just too hot. Um, it's been in the high 80s and low 90s for the past... What's happening here? Alright. So it's just going to do its thing, I guess. Um, it's just been way too hot to have a large wool sweater on my lap. <sighs> Couldn't do it. I really wanted to get some more progress done on the sleeve, but even in my air conditioned apartment, which my air conditioned unit, my air conditioning unit is in my bedroom and it circulates pretty well throughout my apartment. I just could not handle having that sweater on my lap. Um, I can barely handle having my cats on my lap right now. It's that hot. And I love having my cats on my lap. <laughs> so, both of my works in progress are smaller scale this week. In my lovely project bag from a homespun house from Molly, um, I have the Hermione's Sweet Tooth socks, and these are for my mom. The first one is off the needles. Um, this is Knit Picks Felici in the Sprinkles colorway, and um, the toes, 
cuffs and what will be an afterthought heel are all in nitpick stroll in the Wonderland Heather colorway. Um, and it is the Hermione's Everyday Socks sock pattern. So I'm very happy with how the first one of these came out. Um, it's quite a tall sock. I will be putting in the afterthought heel right about here in this yellow stripe. And there's still a lot of sock after that so I'm very pleased with that and my mom really likes them and she's excited to wear them so I bound off the cuff um, on my train ride this morning I have been moving toward doing a one by one twisted rib on my socks for the cuff um, however my mom only has socks that I knit before I started doing that um, so all of her socks have just plain one by one rib and I didn't want to I didn't want to change the technique without her trying on a pair of my socks that have the twisted rib just in case it was too tight on her ankles or her calves. So for the moment it's just one by one rib and I cast on the second sock also on my train ride this morning. It's just a teeny little toe, just a teeny toe with an ice cream cone on it. Um, I have a long car ride coming up this weekend, so I am hoping to get a lot done on the sock. And my second work in progress, which I am keeping in this super cute bag from Adelaide Cottage, is my Scrumptious Memories quilt. So this is the Pinwheel Scrap Blanket from Mina Phillip. Um, and first of all, thank you guys so much for all of your very sweet comments on my square that I made um, this past week, which I talked about um, on my last podcast, which was inspired by my boyfriend Rob and our relationship. So I finished that square this week, and I'm really happy with how it came out. <sighs> Yay. <laughs> and I cast on my third square. So this is actually still um, attached to a mini skein. So <laughs> hopefully that won't be too messy to show you. This is my third square in progress. Oh, I'm showing you the back. Whoops. Here we go. I just moved all the tails right onto the front. Okay. Here we go. So this yarn is by Orange Jellyfish Dreams um, and it's the Rusted Lantern colorway. I knit my brother some socks out of this for Christmas. Uh, this yarn, this yarn, and this yarn were all mini skeins that I received in a swap and I love them. Um, I really like how these two look together. They look very like a 50s diner to me, <laughs> or like an ice cream parlor, um, the pink and the aqua together. I hope the color is okay. I usually record in the mornings um, with natural light, but I didn't want to delay recording another day, so I am recording with my overhead lamp and this lovely little candle. So hopefully the colors will be okay. Um, if not, I will probably try to switch back to natural light recording um, for most of my episodes. This triangle is left over from a hat that I knit last winter. It was a sock head hat. And, oh, why can't I remember the name of the dyer? I got this at the Endless Mountains Fiber Festival in Pennsylvania. Ooh, who's the dyer? Oh, it's Angora Online. So I really like this one. It's got mustards and pink and plum. I really like it. And this is a hand spun mini skein that I received in a swap. And the hand spun is from Poonies by Deb of Fondant Fiber. Um, unfortunately, I cannot remember who 
I swapped with who gave me this. I'm so sorry. If it was you, thank you so very much. This is gorgeous and it's so special to knit with hand spun. So thank you so much for sharing that with me. And then this is also a mini skein from a swap. Um, this, this square is quite bright in comparison to my other two. Um, just for comparison, this was my first square. This is my second square. And this is my third square. So it's definitely a little bit more colorful and wild and crazy. Um, I just was feeling, I was feeling daring when I was putting together the colors for that square. Um, and I am really enjoying it. I don't think it'll be too overwhelming because it will only be one square out of probably 56. I would really like to do seven squares across by eight squares long. Um, whew, that's a lot of squares. But I really want this to be a blanket that can comfortably uh, fit two people under it. And I don't want, I don't want to have to make that choice of having either cold feet or cold shoulders. You know when you have like that blanket that it either covers your feet or it covers your shoulders? I don't want that. I want a nice, wide, long blanket. Um, and at the rate I'm going, honestly, like, I can finish this thing probably in a year. I'm going to not rush it though because I'm really enjoying it and I want to enjoy the process and I want to enjoy um, trading mini skeins with people which is so much fun. Um, so anyway, that square is definitely brighter and I have already picked out the colors for my fourth square and I think it's kind of like I, I bounced back because the colors are all very muted in my fourth square and when I look at that um, color palette I just go because ah, that's really my my comfort zone in terms of color just soft lavenders and mauves um, some gentle sort of honey yellows and browns um, soft blues that's really that's where my heart is in terms of of color um, and that's definitely what my next block is going to be Um, next on the needles, um, this is going to be a quick segment because I talked about one of my Next on the Needles projects last week and that will be the Tulsi Socks in the Grand Budapest colorway by, um, by the Fawn and the Fox and that pattern is by Verena who is known as the Wool Club and I'm very excited to cast those on soon. And the other Next on my needles is actually something that I already have in progress. This is driving me nuts. Where is this coming from? Okay. Um, and that is uh, the Lily Pilly Wrap by Amba O'Brien. I already have this cast on. Um, I have something like 10 stripes done out of 50 or so. Uh, and I just, I don't know, I just put it down and kind of forgot about it. Um, but when Rob and I were in Maine, I really could have used like a cozy wrap. Um, it wasn't it wasn't chilly enough for like a full sweater or a sweatshirt, um, anything like that. But sometimes I could have just used a little bit of warmth around my neck or around my shoulders. So I think the Lily Pilly will be a really excellent wrap for. Um, summer evenings or as it begins to cool off toward fall. Fall. Oh, I can't wait. More about that later. Um, so I really would like to pick this up again and get back to work on it. I do have an Ask Me Anything thread in my Ravelry group. Um, so if you have any questions for me, feel free to go over there and ask. I received a question this week from Cozy Couch and she asked how I store my hand knits. So during the spring and the summer, um, I don't keep a lot of my knitwear accessible just because I, I don't need it that often. Um, I do keep mm, probably about two shawls accessible, 
and those I just keep on my little coat stand in my living room. I'm looking at it, it's over there. That's why I keep looking that way. Um, so that's just in case it's a chilly day or to grab um, if the AC in my office building uh, goes a little berserk like it did um, a couple weeks ago. It was so cold. Um, it was so funny. You'd come in from outside and um, be sweating and just so hot and then within five minutes you were like looking for a sweater um, <laughs> to wear because it was so chilly. So it's nice to have a couple shawls out just in case of things like that or car rides. Um, I tend to get cold pretty easily. Uh, so in the summer when people like to have air conditioning on in cars, I usually am a little bit chilly and it's nice to have a shawl just to kind of wrap up in. Um, and then in the meantime, during summer, um, the rest of my shawls and scarves are in a backpack um, with about three lavender sachets also stuffed in there with them. Um, and they are hanging on my little coat hutch. And that's just kind of to keep them sealed away and safe um, until the winter and once once it gets to fall I have a little basket um, on a shelf in my entryway uh, that is where I kind of toss my mittens and my hat um, and my like everyday shawls um, when I come in from outside just so that I can grab them and go in the morning um, my everyday go-to shawl is um, the Campside Shawl by Alicia Plummer, um, which I have in a lovely deep plum color. It's actually put away right now, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to dig through all of my shawls to get it out, but I will show you when it gets cooler. And my socks. Oh, and in the winter too. Um, most of my shawls end up just folded on my on my coat hutch. I'm wearing them often enough that I'm not really worried about anything happening to them um, because they're being constantly moved um, and picked up. And I've I've never actually had any any sort of problem with pests in my apartment, which I'm very grateful for. <laughs> so my socks I do actually wear year round because. If it's a chilly night, I like to wear nice, warm, hand-knit socks. I like to wear them if I'm going, um, if I'm going away, or if I'm going to be in the car for a while. I just like to have them around. So my hand-knit socks have their own drawer in my dresser. Um, well, it's not just hand-knit socks; it's all my socks. But um, more and more of my socks are gradually becoming hand-knit socks, which makes me very happy. Um, so I keep those in a drawer in my dresser, uh, again with several lavender sachets to uh, discourage any pests, um, which again I've luckily never had an issue with. Um, so that is how I store my knitwear. The next segment is Oh for the Love of Pod, and this is the segment where I um, talk about any podcasts that I've been enjoying lately as well as any podcasts that I would like to thank for mentioning my podcast lately. So first up is Stitching the High Notes which is hosted by Jo. She is Opera Jo on Instagram and she very kindly mentioned my podcast in her last episode and this is an absolutely wonderful podcast. You should definitely watch it. Jo has just very infectious energy. She is a pleasure to watch. It feels like you're just hanging out with your best friend um, who happens to also really enjoy knitting. <laughs> um, I love to settle down with her podcast at the end of the day uh, with a nice cup of tea um, or conversely um, if I want to wake up early and do some knitting before I leave for work I find her podcast um, kind of gets me going for the day. Uh, it's, it's very energizing. Another podcast who mentioned me this week uh, is Knitting from the Mitten and this is hosted by Tiffany. Hi Tiffany! Um, 
and Tiffany is from Michigan and she has a lovely podcast and I really like kind of the approach that she takes to podcasting. She's very conversational. Um, there's something about her vocal inflections that it almost feels like conspiratorial. Like, <laughs> as silly as that sounds, like it feels like you're sitting in a coffee shop with her um, and the two of you are kind of, you know, you kind of have your heads together. Um, chatting and knitting and she's just a pleasure to watch so Tiffany thank you so much for mentioning my podcast um, by the way if anyone um, if you don't hear your podcast mentioned in the oh for the love of pod segment and you've mentioned me recently uh, please send me an ear burn um, on Ravelry like magic link to me to my profile um, when you post your show notes or tag me on Instagram because I really want to make sure that I'm thanking everyone who mentions me. It's an incredibly sweet thing to do and I'm so happy to be part of such a wonderful welcoming community and I want to make sure that I'm being as inclusive as possible. Um, like sometimes I'll notice that I get a bunch of new Instagram followers or YouTube subscribers um, in a short period of time and I think, oh, someone must have mentioned me. Um, on their podcast and I kind of try to figure out who it was to make sure that I am thanking them and also because I want to watch your podcasts. Um, I'm always looking for new podcasts to watch so yeah definitely let me know so that I can get in touch with you. The last podcast I would like to mention this week is the Hey Sister podcast and I'm sure that you've heard of them. They um, I have I think four episodes out right now but this podcast is hosted by Tabby and Rachel um, <laughs> the note that I have in my show notes here um, is nerdy fairy princess knitters because Tabby and Rachel like a lot of the same nerdy things that I like um, like Star Trek um, Doctor Who so there's that but then they also look like magical fairy princesses. They're ridiculously beautiful. And they just have such like a, a kind, calm demeanor. And they're utterly enchanting. And absolutely go watch them. Um, and Rachel has been knitting. Well, she's been knitting for a little longer now. But when they started the podcast, Rachel had been knitting for something like three weeks. And she was already knitting socks. And that was her second ever finished object, was a pair of socks. That's wild! That's like... I think my second ever finished object was like... A hat with a seam up the back. It was not cute. Alright, it was cute, but it wasn't good. <laughs> I guess there's, there's a difference there. <laughs> um, so, incredibly impressive for how long she's been knitting. And I really enjoy that they both like to knit the same patterns um, because it's interesting to see how the same pattern knits up in two different yarns or two different colorways. Um, just very enjoyable. Next up is what I've been reading. I am still reading New Order, a decluttering handbook for creative folks and everybody else, everyone else, sorry, by Faye Wolf. Um, I am about three quarters of the way through this book and I still absolutely love it. I'm really trying to take into account a lot of uh, the strategies that Faye Wolf uses um, and using them in my everyday life. And it's just simple things like remembering to make a to-do list um, and to keep that separated from like your list of things that you'd like to research or look into um, because Otherwise, it's very easy to become overwhelmed with the amount that you need to get done and you just kind of get into just not not doing anything because it's too overwhelming. Um, and a lot of you guys told me that you went out and purchased this book, which is wonderful and I would love to uh, discuss it with all of you. So I'm going to be starting a thread in the Ravelry group where we can talk about this book and just about decluttering in general. 
Um, I know that's something that's kind of always a, a topic for crafters just because we have we have stuff that goes along with our crafts. Um, so I'd really like to hear your perspective on that. Um, I finished Knitlandia by Clara Parks and it actually turned out to be better than I anticipated um, based on what I had said in my last podcast, which was that it wasn't maybe quite as personal as um, The Yarn Whisperer, Clara's other book. Um, but it definitely got more personal as the story went on and um, Clara Parks has a whole chapter about Rhinebeck and it got me so excited for Rhinebeck and for fall. I am not a summer person. I don't like being hot. I, I love sunshine and I love flowers, um, but I don't like sweating. And I don't like chafing. And I don't like not being able to work on my sweaters because it's too hot. It is just not my cup of tea. I like being able to have my windows open and getting a nice fresh breeze. And that is just not possible in this weather because it's just, it's scorching out lately. Um, so reading about fall and about Rhinebeck made me so so excited for that time of year and I cannot wait um, to go to Rhinebeck again this year and speaking of which actually I wanted to mention the festivals that I will be attending this fall I know this is ridiculously early <laughs> I plan for things absurdly far in advance like this past week I asked Rob what days he was planning on taking off for Christmas and he was like huh, I don't know yet, because that's six months away. <laughs> I like to be prepared. <laughs> um, so I will be attending two uh, fiber festivals this fall. I will be attending the Endless Mountains Fiber Festival, which is in Pennsylvania. Um, it's a smaller festival, but it's really a great festival. It's one of my favorites. I go with my mom every year, and we have a great time. And I will be there on Saturday, September 10th. Um, so... Rather than doing a designated meetup time, because I just don't know how many other people who, um, I don't know how many people who watch this podcast uh, live in the Pennsylvania area or will be traveling there for this Fiber Festival. So if you would like to get in touch with me, um, if you would like to meet up, just send me a direct message on Ravelry or Instagram. Um, I wonder if I should start a thread in the group. Maybe I should, just so that anybody else who's going can kind of see who else will be there. And hopefully we can all find a time to meet up. Um, and of course, I will also be going to Rhinebeck this year. I will be going on Saturday, October 15th, and I will be at the podcaster meetup. It's, it's kind of funny to think that this year I'm going to the podcaster meetup as a podcaster. Um, last year I barely got up the nerve to say hello at the podcaster meetup. I had to muster all my courage to say hello to Kristen, um, from the Yarngasm podcast and, uh, Villain Vine Yarns. Even though we, I feel like we see each other relatively frequently because, um, we both live in the New York area, um, we have mutual friends, but I think she and I are both quite shy people, so sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. Like, I always want to talk to her more, especially because we both sew, um, but yeah, I definitely find it difficult to strike up a conversation with people that I don't know very well. Um, so, Kristen, if you're watching this, let's, let's hang out! <laughs> So anyway, um, and I said hello to Amy Beth from the Fat Squirrel Speaks last year and she was so incredibly gracious because I think I said something like, hi, I really like your show, I'm a big fan, ah. Like, I think that's about what came out of my mouth. <laughs> um, and I met Shannon from the Minerva Turkey podcast. Um, I don't believe she is podcasting at the moment, but she's 
a wonderful, extremely kind, extremely sweet person. Um, you know how sometimes you meet people and you just you just get such a warmth from them? Uh, she's definitely one of those people and I wish she would podcast again. <sighs> well, anyway, um, <laughs> so those are the fiber festivals I will be at this fall. And continuing with reading, I am also reading um, the book 10% Happier by Dan Harris. Um, I'm enjoying it. It's very interesting. It's about um, about Dan Harris's sort of journey through uh, learning about meditation um, to try to just improve his quality of life. And it's really enjoyable. It's interesting. I'm listening to it um, as an audiobook and it's narrated by the author. So, um, I'm really enjoying like hearing his perspective in his own voice as well as his own words. It's it can be a little bit of a dry read at times. Maybe dry isn't the right word. It's engaging, but it can be I have to be in the mood to listen to it. Uh sometimes I am just in the mood for something warm and fuzzy. And sometimes I'm just in the mood for um, fiction that will kind of sweep me away in the plot line. Um, but if I'm in the mood for something a little bit more introspective, uh, then I'm, I really enjoy listening to 10% um, Happier. Um, acquisitions. So my big acquisition this week is my bookshelf. Rob and I went to Ikea and had so much fun. I had so much fun. We have a very different reaction to Ikea. I am like a child in Ikea. I just want to run around. I want to bounce on the beds. I want to touch all the things. I want to go in all the little rooms. Um, and I think Rob would kind of rather like go in, get what we need, and get out. And I don't know that my overwhelming enthusiasm is particularly helpful when it comes to actually finding things or remembering what it is that we came in to get. But I find it really fun. So I'm going to give you a little tour of my bookshelf. I took this video this morning so the light will be a little bit different. Um, and I hope you, I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, um, I just wanted to show you my new bookshelf that I talked about in my last episode. It's all set up, I've got all my stuff on it, and I'm super happy with it. So I'm going to take you through a little shelf by shelf tour. On my top shelf I have my camera and a vintage hat box that is decoupaged. And I keep my worsted weight scraps of yarn in there. And then I have some books, and then my cookbooks. Second shelf. This basket is all of my nitpicks. Felici and Stroll. I think it's all of it. There might be a couple of skeins of Stroll tweed in my stash still, but I didn't want to take out my whole stash to find them. Oh, hey, hey Coco. Coco's saying hi. And then these are all my knitting books. And here are these little precious sheep. Um, I got these at a store called Flying Tiger in the city. Um, and I was there with the lovely Jacqueline from the Brooklyn Knit Book Podcast. We're such enablers. We enable each other to shop like crazy. It's ridiculous. But aren't they so cute? I'm going to knit these guys little scarves and hats. So they're nice and warm when winter comes. Next shelf. Um, the basket on the left um, is all either like first attempts at new colorways or one of a kind skeins that I dyed up. If I just wanted to see how a certain color would work on a certain base of yarn or um, 
if I just had some extra dye left at the end of um, a day of dyeing yarn and I wanted to experiment with it. So that's what that whole basket is. And then here's my little Hermione Funko Pop doll. Ah, oh, she's so cute. She's guarding my bookshelf. Then here is one of my yarn bowls. Um, and right now it has a skein of Knit Picks something in it. Let's see what that is. Oh my god, my giant arm. Ooh, this lighting is not flattering. Okay. <laughs> it has a skein of Knit Picks Chroma Fingering in the Sugar Cookie colorway. And... Here's my apothecary jar where I keep my finished hexapuffs because I find it easier to make a bunch of them and then um, add them all onto my blanket in a batch rather than adding them individually. And then this is my hexapuff journal. I thought it was perfect for the beekeeper's quilt. And in here, let's see if I can <laughs> if I can somehow get this to work. And here's a little peek in there. Um, this is kind of how I keep track of what yarns are in my beekeeper's quilt. So that way when um, either if I pass it down or just if I feel like looking through and seeing um, all the yarns from my sweet friends who've uh, traded mini skeins with me, I can look in there and get a little refresher. Speaking of mini skeins, um, the jar on the left is most of my mini skeins and sock yarn leftovers. I do have some that don't fit in there, so hopefully <laughs> with all of my knitting on my pinwheel scrap blanket, soon I'll have a little bit more room in there and I can put all my minis in there. And then I've got my art books um, and then just some other some other books, um, my Lewis Carroll collection of two, <laughs> um, and this really adorable book, which I love. It's called It's Wonderful to Be in Love. It's so pretty. And then lastly, this is just some fiction books. Um, my Calvin and Hobbes books, my collection of artful blogging magazines, a board game. Um, this is kind of the, the everything shelf. <laughs> There's a lot of different stuff happening on this one. So I hope you guys have enjoyed a little peek at my new bookshelf. I'm absolutely crazy about it. Um, I love how it looks in my living room and I'm happy that I got to share it with you. Bye. So that's my bookshelf. And there's Coco. Hi, baby. Hi, little guy. Coco's saying hello. My other acquisition this week is much smaller, but equally wonderful. Um, I reached a milestone at my work recently, and uh, <laughs> I was not planning on purchasing any yarn this past week. But um, I texted Rob about my um, about this particular milestone at work, and he said, "Surely you deserve one little skinnamarinky dink of yarn um, <laughs> to celebrate this." And I thought, "Oh yes, I do." He is such a dangerous man, you guys. He absolutely enables my my yarn buying habit. He really does. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> Um, so for my little treat, I chose this mini skein set. And this is from Teeny Button Studios. I'll get her card to show you. So I heard about this Etsy shop. I actually already followed this Etsy shop on Instagram, 
but Candace, who on the Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast, talked about her Steven Universe set of mini skeins that she had ordered, and she mentioned that they also had Lord of the Rings sets. So I immediately went over there when I had an occasion to purchase yarn and picked up the Shire set. It's so pretty. I love it. Um, so the colorways in this set are Farmer Maggot's Crop, Gandalf's Fireworks, A Shortcut to Mushrooms, Rosy Cotton, The Door at Bag End, and Brandywine River. Um, I absolutely love these. Eventually they'll go into my pinwheel scrap blanket, but there's something so satisfying about just having this neatly packaged little set. Um, so they might stay like this for a little while. And while I was at the Teeny Button Studio Etsy shop, I also purchased a couple progress keepers. I'm not sure yet whether I will actually use these as progress keepers or whether they will be charms that I hook onto my gee, my gee peepers, <laughs> my bee keepers quilt, um, because I really like the idea of having little charms on there, and these are adorable woodland creatures. Coco is looking at this little hedgehog like he might go after it. I hope not. So these all came in a set and I love them. I got this little hedgehog. An acorn. For some reason this is the spot where my camera wants to focus so sorry if it's like awkwardly off to the side. <laughs> And a little squirrel. And Robin, who is the owner of this Etsy shop, also included a very sweet little stitch marker with my purchase. It's a little key with a heart on top that says love. So thank you so much, Robin. I absolutely love that little goodie. I guess that's it. I felt like there was more. Hmm. Um, thank you so much for joining me and I'm looking forward to spending more time with you next week. Bye.